Hello, BookTube. I thought I'd pop in just briefly. I'm still absolutely buried in unexpected writing. Just buried. I have ooh, about 15 more hours left before the extended deadline that my friend got for the writing that we have to do. And I'm going to need all of that time, but I think that will be enough time for the vast amount of writing that I have to do. Uh, but it precludes virtually everything else. I still have to do my own writing in the day, every day. But it precludes uh, BookTube, unfortunately. But I couldn't, I missed, I missed checking in on you, so I couldn't, I couldn't resist just doing one quick video today. I can pretty much promise that I will be back tomorrow. I think tomorrow the dust will be settled one way or another. I don't plan on failing, though. Uh, so I thought I'd just just pop in, uh, say hello. How are you? You're looking good. Uh, I uh, could give you a tech update. I am using my MacBook Air for almost everything in my life and loving it. I am loving my I, my iPad for reading. Uh, I'm loving my lateral uh, storage clipboard. Such a perfect, perfect idea. It's a clipboard for writing but it's storage for everything else. It's just perfect. It's so much better than the various boxes and contraptions that I had that had one or another of the things that I use on a weekly basis. It's so much better to have it all in one place that's actually functional. Uh, and in addition to that, there's also uh, Goodreads. I made a, a sporadic, half-hearted attempt yesterday to try to fall back in love with Goodreads or to fall in love with it for the first time. I know that's where lots and lots of readers are. So I went to Goodreads, I wrote out quick sort of teaser introductions to some of books that I've reviewed recently, uh, and left links for the longer reviews on uh, Open Letters Review. One of the books was Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. I felt that I was duty-bound to write an accurate negative review of that book, since it is orthodoxy, it's, it's holy writ. No other critic is going to offer a negative review of that book, whether they thought anything negative about it or not. And, and I would argue that because critics are such ingrown, introverted type things, they're not going to think anything negative of it because finally they have a chance to be at the cool kids' table. Uh, the book is crap, absolutely undiluted crap, and I thought at least one review at length, in detail, by one critic should say that. So that was one of the ones that I linked to on, on Goodreads. And I mean to do more of that today. Just three or four, just do three or four reviews uh, a day of new stuff, maybe link to old stuff. There are thousands and thousands of my reviews out there. And all of those books are on Goodreads, and that's where the readers are. So if I can make a little bit of a dent, uh, that would be great. So there's Goodreads as well. I think I leave my Goodreads on every video. If I, I, I copy and paste that block of information on the faint chance that one of you might want to kick in a sue or two to my my poor, desperate Patreon so that I can finally quit my full-time job at the box factory. <laughs> uh, but if I don't, I'll make sure to list it for this video. Uh, and there's also a packet that we can open together. I know it's not much of a video. <laughs> it's not much of a video, but I am crushed, just crushed with work. My only consolation, I have two. One is that I don't think I'm going to fail. Because I, I don't just have thousands and thousands of words to write. I also want them to be good. Uh, that's consolation number one. And consolation number two is I don't think there's anybody on earth that my friend could go to, could have gone to, that would do this for the same amount of money that I'm asking, which is bupkis. <laughs> so, uh, but I don't have long on a video. I'm gonna, that's going to have to wait until tomorrow. But we at least have one package uh, that we can do. Uh, so let's see. Let's see what this is. Uh... Oh, okay. I think I heard about this from the publicist. A, a spooky type of thing for October. This is by C.J. Cook, and it's called The Lighthouse Witches. Marrying suspense, folklore, and conversations about the human impact on nature, this book has a critical hit list, it was a, hit, a critical hit last October, that was called A Captivating Bedside Thriller by the Chicago Review of Books, for whom I have never written. So did we see this last year? Uh, when single mother Liv is commissioned to paint a mural in a hundred-year-old lighthouse on a remote Scottish island, she thinks it's an opportunity to start over with her three daughters, Luna, Sapphire, and Clover. 
Yes, because that's exactly what you name your children. That's exactly the kind of job you get and exactly the kind of location that you get. Uh, but I think I would remember Luna, Sapphire, and Clover, so I don't think we saw this last year. Uh, when Sapphire and Clover go missing, she's frantic. No idea why. She must not read. <laughs> if you take a job a painting a mural in a 100-year-old lighthouse, and you, then you know you're in a novel. And if you're in a novel, then your children are going to disappear. <laughs> it's just a standard thing. I'd be upset if they didn't. Uh, she learns that the cave beneath the lighthouse, because of course, uh, was once a prison for women accused of witchcraft. The locals warn her about wildings, supernatural beings who mimic human children, created by witches for revenge. I'm thinking if the witches really wanted to exact revenge on young parents, the original version of children is plenty. <laughs> Just plenty. I know young parents who haven't had a single night's sleep in four solid years. They have well since crossed the border into clinically diagnosis, diagnosable psychoses. I don't think you need a supernatural being to make that any worse. Uh, 22 years later, Lunar has been searching for her missing sisters. When she receives a call that Clover has been found, she's initially ecstatic. However, she's still seven years old, at the age she was when she vanished. Luna is worried Clover is wilding. Uh, Luna has few memories of her time on the island, but she'll have to return to find the truth of what's happened to her family. She doesn't, but she doesn't realize just how much the truth will change her. Hey, I, I have to admit, despite the, uh, the hackneyed premise, this is sort of intriguing. I don't think I read this last year. Uh, drawing on history, the author drew inspiration for the Lighthouse Witches from the little-known history of Scot Scotland's witch trials. Cook said in an interview with Crime by the Book that, quote, there was a witch trial 20 minutes from my home and there's barely any commemoration for the women who were murdered. 4,000 people, mostly women, tortured and murdered, their names and memories tainted forever. It fascinates and disturbs me because 400 years later we still use the term witch to slander women. Uh, okay, and the author is an award-winning poet and novelist published in 23 languages. Fantastic. And she teaches writing, creative writing, at the University of Glasgow. So if you're thinking about matriculating, you might get her as a teacher. Fantastic. So this is, uh, the date on this is October 5th. But there are tons of reviews and that mention uh, of it being a critical hit last October. So I'm thinking this is just a paperback reprint. Uh, oh, well, no. The, the sell sheet here says that it's a paperback original coming out for $17 in just this format uh, in early October. Well, if that's true, then how... Oh, no, no it, I'm sorry. It would be nice if I could learn how to read. It isn't The Lighthouse Witches that was a critical hit last year. It was The Nesting, which I think we did see on this channel. The Nesting was a critical hit. This is a new book by the same author, and it's going to be a paperback release. It's, yours is going to look just like this, and it's going to be $17 instead of $37. Fantastic. Uh, I have to admit that, uh, you know, it's a hackneyed thing, of course. You get you get a job working alone, isolated, on a lighthouse that's 100 years old. And there's a history of witchcraft in the area, and maybe supernatural events and whatnot. All of those elements are extremely familiar, but it's all going to be about how the author does it. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head now what I thought of the nesting, if I got it. Uh, and I'm drawing a blank, because all I'm thinking about is the writing that I have to do. <laughs> but I will, I will clear it up. Uh, so there you go. It sounds like a, a really... Uh, I mean, we can't hold against it, the fact that some of its, its elements are familiar. Maybe the rest of the world could, but this corner, BookTube can't. Right? We read all the time. You're going to counter familiar elements all the time in things. Can't hold that against a thing. It'll be whether or not this author sits on those elements or makes something new and interesting out of them. That will be the whole thing. That's that's the whole question in any case. Um, so this comes out in early October. If you're looking for uh, a spooky season type read, you can't you can't really get more rarefied than, than children going missing at a 100-year-old Scottish lighthouse. So so the Lighthouse Witches, early October, uh, and also, uh, you know, as a cherry on the top, an affordable paperback instead of an overpriced hardcover. So that's our book for today, The Lighthouse Witches. Uh, and that's about it. The bean is still adorable. I am fine. The weather is fine. I think we're probably going to get a little rain tonight. Feels like the humidity is cresting, probably to be wiped out by a little bit of rain. Uh, and I have an enormous amount of work to do, <laughs> just an enormous amount of work. 
So the main priority, I my own writing, if I put the spurs to it, takes about 30 minutes in a day. Uh, and other than that, the only priority I have, the only ironclad priority I have is freedom. So a few walks for her to meet the people and press the flesh and shake hands and scream at people uh, because the neighborhood would get upset if they didn't see her on a regular basis. But also a longer walk with freedom. Unless there's some prohibitive reason not. She hates the rain, so that's out if it rains. And also, if it's triple-digit heat, then that's prohibitive. That's dangerous for me and dangerous for her, so we can't do that. But on ordinary days, anywhere between... 15 degrees Fahrenheit and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, we can certainly go on a longer walk, and that's not optional. That can't be canceled because of a massive writing schedule. That's, that's a vital time for the two of us to get out, stretch the legs, get tired, and not be human. It's a, it's a, a great relief for her to get that exercise, and it's a great relief for me to, to just shed being human, just shed English and thoughts and ongoing mental dramas and whatnot. Just be with her for an hour. That is, or more than an hour. That is wonderful. So, uh, but uh, this is not either one of those things. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to wrap this up. With any luck, you'll be seeing plenty of this sexy influencer face tomorrow. Uh, when, for good or ill, I will be done <laughs> with the first part of this assignment. I hope. We shall see. <laughs> well, I will, I will update you then. Thank you, Book 2.